If you think you can live off minimum wage, please watch this video. What is going on everybody? My name is Fernando Hernandez. Welcome to another finance episode. If you're into personal finance, health and wellness and fitness, please subscribe because that is what all of my videos are about. And today we are going to go over exactly how I would budget if I was making minimum wage. I want to preface this whole video by saying minimum wage is not a livable income. Minimum wage is not an income that will allow you to raise a family. Minimum wage is not an income that will allow you to live on your own. Minimum wage is exactly what it is. It is a job that pays you the minimum amount of money required by law. And in my state, minimum wage is $15.13, which is absolutely bonkers because when I was working, I don't know, less than a decade ago, like eight years ago, I was getting paid like $7.25. So the fact that it's doubled is great for the young kids starting out. Let's just assume in this example, you have no dependents. If you have a child, like look, everybody's personal situation is different. And if you have a dependent, you can still follow along on this video. So to start everything off, let's figure out what does the minimum wage equate to on a yearly basis. So right here, I just did the math. $15.13 times 40 hours a week times 52 weeks in a year. You're probably not going to work 40 hours every week. You're probably not going to work every week in the year. This number may be a little bit inflated. It's also not accounting for overtime. You could potentially work doubles, make more. So this is just a very generic example. I'm also not able to 100% account for your state taxes, your federal taxes. Every state is different and your federal with tax withholdings can be different person to person. And so what I did is I just took 20% out of the pay. If you're making minimum wage, I doubt you're contributing to a 401k. You're definitely not in a high income tax bracket. So I felt like taking 20%, it gives us a little bit of cushion in case you're not getting 20% taken out of your paycheck. I take that number divided by 12. So we're left with $2,098 every month. And on a bi-weekly basis, which is the pay rate for most jobs, it's $1,049 every two weeks. And in this section here, I like to split up my paychecks and I do this because there can be times where your paycheck is higher if you worked more, if you got overtime, if you worked on a holiday, or if you got a bonus. So I like to have this section here just in case you make more in a specific month. You can add a row here to change your monthly total income. For the sake of this video, we're just gonna focus on the $1,049 we get paid. In this section here, we have an example bank statement. These are normal expenses for the average consumer, your bank statements can look way different. This is just an example that I came up with. So in this section here, I broke up some of the categories that your expenses or charges on your debit card or credit card can be lumped into. We have rent, utilities, groceries, personal shopping, takeout food or eating out, so on and so forth. And so the first thing I like to do when I'm looking at a bank statement is to start with our needs. So if you haven't watched my first video on how to get started budgeting, please give that a watch. But our needs are broken up into five categories, housing, utilities, food, clothing, and healthcare. That's it. Anything outside of those five categories are a want. No matter how much you think you need it, it is a want. So first things first, rent is $800. And I know everybody watching this is like, where is rent $800? Look, again, this is an example of someone making minimum wage. If you're making minimum wage, you're not going to afford $1,600 rent. You're not going to afford $1,800 rent. My total income for the month is $2,098. <laughs> it's, it's not going to happen. You need to have a room or you should be living at home and paying your parents a few hundred bucks. But again, everybody's situation is different. Not everybody has the luxury to live with their parents. So in this situation, it is one person living with a roommate and they are splitting the rent together and they are also splitting the utilities together. So the next thing I'm gonna go over is the utilities. In this example, Joe only has to pay for his rent, electric, and water. That's inclusive of his housing and utilities. So two of the needs are taken care of. 50 bucks plus 50 bucks, $100 a month in utilities. What is the next thing I see here? I see phone bill, 75 bucks. I am a big proponent of separating your utilities from your bills because if you say bills are a need, 
You can have the newest iPhone, whatever is out right now, 16, and have a $200 phone bill or $150 phone bill and say, oh, this is a need. I need it. You don't need the newest iPhone. You can have any other smartphone. Every smartphone does basically the same thing and your bill will be significantly less. Don't be afraid to switch carriers. Don't be afraid to get what works best for you. So for Joe, his phone bill is 75 bucks. I'm going to add it to the utilities because Joe is a good boy and his $75 phone bill is only for unlimited talk and text. The next expense here is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is necessary. Before I was like, yeah, Wi-Fi is a one or whatever, but no, I would classify Wi-Fi, especially in today's world where a lot of people are working from home as a utility and you're splitting your Wi-Fi with your roommate. So it's only $30. The next bill is car insurance and that's $150. That's really high. I'm personally of the opinion that if you're making minimum wage, you shouldn't be driving this crazy expensive car and you really don't need full coverage on it. $150 is normal teetering the above average realm unless you have accidents or you know claims on your record i think 150 is teetering a little bit high and i would kind of see if i can renegotiate or shop around for rates but for right now let's just keep it 150 bucks renters insurance that will go into utilities you can easily get a hundred dollar policy for the year for renters insurance and you're splitting that with your roommate 300 car note so joe is not driving a beater Joe is driving decent year Toyota or Honda or something along those lines. If you're making minimum wage, stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're making minimum wage. Your income is at the bottom of the barrel, the bottom <laughs> of the barrel. I don't know how else to say it. It's delusion. People are delusional. How can you be making the state minimum requirement and driving a car that you have to finance? Ridiculous, ridiculous. So Joe has a car note of $300. These are like our bills. Like there's nothing we could really do about that. Already, we're at over $1,500. You're like at 75% of your monthly take-home pay. And these are basic things that you need to survive. And this is exactly why I say budgeting is super important, but your mindset is critical, critical. Because in what world does Joe think it's okay to make minimum wage and have a car note? That makes no sense. He's probably paying nine, 10 plus percent on this car loan. I don't even want to get into how predatory car financing is. I'll have to make another video for that. So now let's jump into day-to-day -day expenses, which is the silent killer for most people. Wawa. I'll put that into the takeout food. People get in that Wawa every morning killing you. Sheen, 55 bucks, personal shopping, Walmart. I know some people go to Walmart and get groceries. I personally don't. Whenever I go to Walmart, I'm buying things that are not grocery related. For this example, I'm going to say the $87 was for personal related item, not groceries. Costco, 107 bucks. This is another example. You go to Costco to buy your groceries and you end up coming out with a brand new mini fridge. <laughs> Costco's dangerous. He shouldn't even be shopping at Costco. Joe is all over the place. I love this example. This is like a real world example. People make minimum wage and want to live like this fantasy lifestyle. If you're making minimum wage, you need to be grocery shopping at like Aldi's, not having a Costco membership and going to Costco. For this example, I'm going to say the $107 were for groceries. Duncan, killing you guys. Six bucks at Dunkin', eight bucks at Starbucks, TikTok shop. Guys, delete TikTok. I'm gonna say it until I'm blue in the face. Delete TikTok. Social media is training our minds to think that we need all of these things to be happy and we can't even afford it. We can't even afford it. What are we buying on TikTok shop for 65 bucks? Like, just don't do it. Haircut, 40 bucks. Listen, I get a haircut. We all need a haircut, but $40 is expensive. Personal shopping. Uber Eats and DoorDash. I'm not going to get upset because 50 bucks of the month on Uber Eats and DoorDash is not horrible. I personally know people that DoorDash food like every week. There is absolutely no advantage or no convenience from ordering on those apps. You're not saving money. You're actually paying a premium. You're not saving any time. The time it takes you to figure out what you want, place your
your order, wait for it to come. You could have made something in the kitchen. And then what pisses me off is like, I will go grocery shopping and then that evening I'll go out to get dinner. Then why did I just go grocery shopping? TJ Maxx. I'm victim of the TJ Maxx and the Marshalls addiction. That retail therapy is killing us. 250 bucks at ShopRite is bonkers. For one person, you're at $400 for the month in groceries. Starbucks again, 20 bucks. The bar, $70. Why are you going to the bar, Joe? Restaurant, 120 bucks. If I had the choice, I would pick one or the other. Like you can go to the restaurant with your friends and get a drink and spend 100 bucks rather than spending $190 going to a bar one weekend and then going to a restaurant another time. And then now to the subscriptions, Netflix and HBO, Amazon. I also have ATM here. Say I don't have it here as a bank statement. I honestly should add it, ATM. Let's say Joe took out 100 bucks. And there you have it. We are $502 over our income. To rephrase, we spent $500 more than we make. So many people do this. And you know how so many people recoup that $500? That's when they get into the credit card debt. That's when they get into the personal debt. That's when they ask a relative to spot them a hundred bucks, cash at me 50 bucks. If you're getting upset listening to me, it's you. You are that person. Like you need to stop. And this is why budgeting is super important. It's not easy. It's not fun. It's redundant. It's annoying, but it will save you from being in this situation. You should be opening a credit card to get points, to get status, to travel hack, to do all the fun stuff. You shouldn't be getting a credit card. As, oh, it's 0% for 12 months. Let me put these expenses on it. I'll pay it back because the 12 months are going to go like this. And now you're hit with a 28% interest on all of these expenses that were avoidable, that were not even necessary. So let's get to the budget. Rent, we can't do anything about that. $360. $60 a month on groceries is a lot of money for one person, maybe a baby. You can try to convince me in the comments that it's not or inflation this, inflation that. If you go with a cost conscious mindset, if you're following the coupon book, looking at the circulars and spend $275 a month. Listen, I'm one person. I don't even spend $275 a month and I'm not making minimum wage. If I can do it, you definitely can do it. Honestly, you know what? No, 250 bucks for the month. Buy rice, beans, chicken, chopped meat. Don't buy name brand Totino's pizza rolls or DiGiorno's pizza or Hot Pockets or nachos or all of that garbage because that's the stuff that's really expensive. Personal shopping, $300 a month in personal shopping is ridiculous. 150 bucks. No if, ands, or buts. I don't care. You can get your coffee, but chill on the TJ Maxx. Chill on TikTok shop. Literally stop with the TikTok shop. Just chill on all of that. Takeout food, $286 for the month on takeout food. Why? 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 $150 for takeout food. Remember, you're making minimum wage. Whenever you plan to splurge, have a good time, buy around the shots for the homies, the average American is making $60,000 a year. You're making half of what the average American is making. So, no buying. I forgot to add gas. 50 bucks. Look at that. You're even worse. Gas, 50 bucks. You can't beat that. Car expenses, $450. That just hurts me to say that. Unfortunately, Joe's in the pickle. Look, I'm just going to go on a little rant here. Car loans are ridiculously predatory. They're getting people into these 72 month terms just to have the lowest car note possible because they're taking advantage of just how ignorant some of us can be. We would think, well, I'm going to get a brand new car and only have to pay $300 a month. That's a fantastic deal. You're paying that for six years, double digit interest. By the time you're done paying off your car loan, you probably paid almost double the car's ticket price was when you got it. That's six years later, the car is probably worth half of the ticket price. It's ridiculous. Save up your money, save up five grand, get a little beater, drive from A to B and get a better job. Make more money. A minimum wage is such an easy job to capitalize on and leverage the skills that you learn, create a resume, build a personal brand and get a better paying job. There is no excuse. And if you feel like you don't have
marketable skills learn there's a million free resources youtube being the biggest one to learn a skill and capitalize on that's the end of my spiel you're already at the negative we just lost the budget no longer works you know what that means bye bye netflix bye bye hulu bye bye amazon prime don't get mad at me don't get mad at anybody else this is your fault you're in the situation because you chose to be what now can we do to get back in the green here we're gonna have to bring the takeout food down to 100 bucks a month groceries you're gonna have to live on 225 a month we're gonna have to bring the personal shopping down to 100 bucks a month when you create a budget is to be able to save at least 100 dollars a month that you can put away for an emergency fund so when the god forbid happens or for when you need to go over one month you have money saved you don't have to open a credit card the high expenses versus a low income kills a lot of people they get into this credit card debt they miss payments they destroy their credit score then when they start making more money and when they want to start leveling up in life it's hard the banks are not going to look at you as a trustworthy applicant you're setting yourself back if you are in this situation or if you are almost in this situation you're making the minimum wage you have a lot of expenses you need to grit your teeth and you need to do what you have to do it sucks but it is all about your mindset the next step is to increase your income you most definitely most definitely have to increase your income let's just look right here and let's just say you make five dollars more an hour 1400 a month 1400 a month now we're saving 800 dollars a month so now you can go easy a little bit you know okay whew, you know that was a rough few months let me be able to spend 200 dollars a month on personal shopping let me be able to spend you know 150 dollars a month on takeout food 300 dollars a month on on groceries i can get back my amazon prime my netflix and my hbo max Finally, I've been missing my shows. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is you missed out on some episodes because you had to cancel your subscriptions. You missed out on going out with your friends a few times a week for a few months. That's the worst of it. So what? Grit your teeth and get ready to rock and roll because the very worst alternative can be you get a credit card, you rack up debt that you can't pay off and you're screwed with a car loan and credit card debt. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know a lot of you guys enjoyed the last video that is somewhere on this screen if you can please comment on this one some feedback that you have for me if you liked it if you didn't like it or you could even comment saying how much you make a month and how i would budget that i hope you guys learned something and i can't wait to catch you guys on the next episode peace